Hi, for this video what I want to do is show you how to find the reference angle for the given angles. Um, I have given two angles in degrees and two angles that are in radians so that you can see finding reference angles in both um, forms. Um, in case you don't remember what a reference angle is, a reference angle is the acute angle formed by the x-axis and the terminal side. So it's always helpful to remember where you're going to be or where your reference angle is. Um, so the first step is to figure out whether you're in quadrant 1, 2, 3, or 4. Um, remember that the way that we rotate our angles is that we start at 0 degrees or 0 radians. And then we go counterclockwise, so this would be 90 degrees, 180 degrees, th um, this would be 270 degrees, I almost switched to radian mode, and then this would be 360 degrees. In terms of radians, it would be 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So your given angle measures, you want to figure out which one they are in between, which quadrant they are in, and then you're going to use the given rule. In quadrant 1, theta prime is what we reference, or what we put for the reference angle. And theta prime is just going to equal the acute angle because everything in between here is either between 0 and 90 or 0 and pi over 2. In quadrant 2, if you end here, you would use the rule pi minus theta or 180 degrees minus theta depending upon whether you are in degrees or radians. For quadrant th 3, you're going to take the angle minus 180 or the angle minus pi. And then in the last quadrant, you're going to take 360 degrees minus pi or 2 pi minus theta. All right, so let's get started with the ones that we're given. The first thing that's always helpful is to draw a picture to help you see which quadrant you are in. So whenever you have a negative value, you're going to go, um, you're going to go clockwise, so the opposite direction. So if I go here, this would put me at negative 90, negative 180, negative 210 would be somewhere in between negative 180 and negative 270. So we would be over here in quadrant 2. Because of the fact that we're dealing with a negative angle, there's a couple different things that you could do, but what I would do is I would find the positive angle that this corresponds to. So the positive angle theta that this corresponds to would be 360 minus 210, which would give us 150 degrees. So if I had rotated counterclockwise like we traditionally did, I would go 150 degrees. And then to find our reference angle, our theta prime, we would take 180 degrees and subtract 150 degrees and see that the acute angle formed would be 30 degrees. This is very important when you're trying to find coordinate and you're dealing with um, the trig functions in the coordinate plane. You want to make sure that you can find the reference angle to set up your right triangles. All right, so moving on to the next one. For 340 degrees, if we draw our picture, this time we don't have to worry about going the opposite direction. 340 degrees would put us over here because it's between 270 and 360. So to find theta prime, we would just take 360 degrees. I'm just using this rule right here. Minus 340 degrees. And so we end up with theta prime is equal to 20 degrees. So 20 degrees would be the angle measure formed um, between the x-axis and the terminal side. All right, last two are given in radians, just so that you can see an example with radians. Um, 3 pi over 5 is not quite, so if you think about this in terms of fractions, it makes it a little bit easier. 5 fifths would be pi, so 3 fifths would be in quadrant 2. So if we draw out a picture to help us see where we are, 3 pi over 5 would end up being in quadrant 2. All right, so to find theta prime, we would just take this rule here. So we would use the three, sorry, I'm looking, I'm thinking of the next one. We're going to be using this rule right here where we take theta minus, I just said theta, pi minus theta. Sorry, mixing up my Greek letters, not trying to confuse you. 
All right, so if I plug this in, so we would take pi minus three pi over five. And like I said, if you just think about this in terms of fifths, one pi is really five divided by five. So that makes it a little bit easier to do the math. And we would end up with two pi over five as our final answer. All right, and then the last one, seven pi over six. This is the one that I was thinking of when I was referencing the wrong thing. If we draw our picture for this one, seven pi over six is a little bit more than halfway around. It's a little bit more than pi, so we would end up somewhere down here. And we would have seven pi over six would be our full rotation. So if we wanna find theta prime, this time we're gonna take seven pi over six and we're gonna subtract pi. So I'm using this rule this time to figure out what is left over between those two. And again, if you just think about this in terms of fractions, one whole rotation is the same thing as six pi divided by six. So we would end up with pi over six as our reference angle. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well. Please make sure that you check out all of the other videos that I have available.